Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. Welcome into the Sports Fanatic News and True Philadelphian Sportscast NHL free agency show where we talk about the free agents that are still available and where we think they might land. I am joined by my always and often co-host Steel Flyers, who is to my right in this video. I hope that's how it's set up actually in the video too, but where where it is for me right now. And then Pirlo Wisdom. To my uh, left, uh, how it's set up for me right now, at least. <laughs> uh, how it's set up for y'all, who knows? But please like, comment, and subscribe to our Sports Fanatic News YouTube page and True Philadelphian Sportscast on the podcast platforms. We really appreciate your support. But, Steele, I'll start with you. How are you doing today? I'm doing, man. I'm doing. I'm doing. It's been uh, rather weird weather, kind of where I'm at. It's like in the 60s and... So I got the window nice. open. I know. It's like, whoa, all right. So yeah, I played I'll, hockey today. It was nice. I know. I'll, I'll take advantage of that in October. Other than that, I'm doing great, man. I'm, I'm blessed to be here. Thank you guys very much for having me. It's always a pleasure. Um, can't wait to get into it, man. Free agency. Let's see what we got. Yeah, free agency time is always fun it started uh, of course last week and now we have guys some guys that are still pretty solid names to mention available still uh pirlo how are you doing today sweet not so lucky on the weather front but there's a little bit of snow on the ground still snowing. Uh, yeah, it's oh about, man it's about 45 fahrenheit i think something like uh, that. that's not so, good, though. maybe it's 35 i don't know zero degrees so it got a little above, above, above zero degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit necessarily, but uh, somewhere around there. Maybe it's 30. Cold. It's cold. It's, it's pretty cold. It's pretty cold. It's October for here, always like this. But it warms my heart to talk about some free agency. I'll tell you that right now. Because there you I, go. I, I love talking to the hot The free people. agency is your hot cocoa. Yes, it is. <laughs> it sure is. It warms the hot cocoa. Perfect way, perfect. That's perfect, man. Because you know, who doesn't like hot cocoa? I mean, seriously, who doesn't yeah. like hot cocoa? And this is this is very odd too, because normally we would not even be remotely talking about free agency right now. We would be talking about what uh, the first week or the first yeah. week and a half of the season. Right yeah. now, normally, you know what I mean. So this is definitely uncharted territory. That is for sure. That is 100% uncharted territory this year. But having the season followed by the free agency right away definitely kept it going and kept it more and more interesting. So uh, let's jump right into it. And we'll start with forwards. And then we're going to go to goaltenders. And then we're going to go to defensemen for you in this video. Uh, at forwards, um, the elephant in the room guy that everybody knows about that's still available is obviously Mike Hoffman. Uh, he's a guy that's the best scorer that was honestly in the entire free agency. Uh, no offense, Tyler Toffoli. I love you too, but you're not better at scoring than Mike Hoffman. Um, so uh, he's the best overall scorer. The problem is that also makes him pay more. And we know in this climate, uh, people don't want to spend as much, which before we got a pretty good deal as far as I'm concerned in the low four millions range. So Hoffman, we know, is going to get more than that. So it's going to be interesting who shells out the money. But I'll go to uh, Pirlo first on this one. Give me uh, two teams that you think might shell out the money and get this top scorer in the free agency and Mike Hoffman. Well, first of all, I'll talk about a team that I didn't have in my head that I heard some pretty strong rumors on that they are, he is waiting for Vancouver to free up room to sign him. And that one took, threw me for a loop because they're pretty stacked on forward, you know, but with a, you know, a lot of, they have a lot of forwards already that are pretty, I hope they're not. To doing something stupid like trading Brock Besser, but I don't know what their how that would be or if it's true or not. But it's something that came up today, so I throw it out there. Um, as far as other teams that may be in on that, I like this is one where you may like somebody like the Colorado Avalanche could give yeah. him. We've heard about he's he's actually mentioned that he wouldn't he would consider a one year thing like. Taylor Hall did 
if it makes sense for him. And I think that's something that Joe Sackick may do for one year. Why not go for it? Take a high percentage shooter like Hoffman for that second line to bolster that second line behind maybe the best or at least top two lines in the league. So that would be one. And uh, besides that, there's a bevy of teams that are probably underneath that. That Like if you're going to do a one-year, I know the Calgary Flames, if they can find the room, would love to have a guy like Hoffman. Uh, that would be fantastic for them if they could do that, a one-year deal, bring Hoffman in. I thought Taylor Hall was going to go there, but apparently that didn't work out. So um, I'm sure they would be quite happy to get somebody like Hoffman. So that would be my other team off the top of my head. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's probably there's probably going to be look. He's going to probably get, and already is probably getting, a large amount of phone calls for his services. Okay, and 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 I think really what's going to really determine that is exactly with what happens with Taylor Hall, right? Mm -hmm. And and Taylor Hall was signed, yes, one year, eight million, yeah, just one year, eight million mm -hmm. dollars. It's a one year deal, yeah. Okay, and so would you put Which Taylor gave Hall? him more money because of this year? What, what I one put year Taylor deals Hall? are going to give you more money because understand, of this year. understand, understand. Okay, but see, that's kind of basically what everybody's kind of looking at right now with Mike Kaufman. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Because there's nobody going to give him tenure or anything like that. And so, are you, you saying think, would it be in the same category? That's what I'm trying to say. I don't think it is. Maybe a million. No, less. I don't. No, I don't true. think so either because Taylor Hall is a guy when at his best is a guy that won the Hart Trophy, can be a 85 points and up guy where Mike Hoffman right. isn't that because he doesn't right. pass. He's right. not like he's an okay, but he's like doesn't he's not that great of a passer. He sets his teammates up maybe like twenty times at most a year usually. Right, and then Potts like forty goals. He's a scorer. Two years. Two that's years why. Yeah, that's why he he's a yeah. straight up scorer. That's what. Mike, you that's what you're paying Mike Hoffman for, but Taylor right. Cole at his best is an overall so dynamic player. You're asking so. me which two teams I think might have the, the cap. Six system. million, maybe, honestly, yeah. with uh, the way it is this One year. year. Because, that's why. Yeah, you ask salary uh, what it could be. Well, if he gets a couple years, it'll probably only be for six, too, because you're not going to get paid more with the cap staying steady for two years. If you get no. paid a two or three year deal, that's so what I mean. I would say like six million, right. six five at most. Right, right, right. That's why. That's so. That's why I wanted to. That's why I wanted to point that out because that that shoe dropped with with Tyler Hall, right? Or Taylor Hall, or, or however you want to say that. Right. Uh, Mr. Hall got got the eight million one year, so that pretty much set the bar right there. So what teams are in that neighborhood, or let's go the tier below that. So that means teams have to be in the five, six, six and a half million dollar range. You know, what teams are going to be able to do that? You know, L.A. comes to mind. Okay, um, I, Coyotes come to mind. Do they have cap space? No. No, no they don't. They're, they're not going to have cap space? No, okay. you would be, you but would L.A. definitely they comes to mind. People. L.A. comes to mind, you know what I mean? And I know that um, you did also mention the Avalanche, and that was one of the other teams I was going to mention as well. Yeah. But you know who else might also be potentially doing this? And I know this is going to sound really weird, but... Do you think maybe a team like Montreal or a team like the Islanders or somebody along those lines? Do you think like or even Toronto? I feel Montreal would be, Yeah, if Toronto won't have the money. I feel like Montreal would be more likely because they have more um years of control with their guys than um, the Islanders do at the current point. So they're going to have to pay guys a little bit sooner. Right. So they like, if they give them a two to three year, like say they give them a three year deal that wouldn't ever really hurt them in Montreal. If he gets paid like 6 million yeah. a year where yeah. in a, in New York, that might eventually and like hurt the team a little bit to be giving him 6 million, not because he's not producing just because of, where young guys are at and where they need to get paid at that point of their careers. So okay, okay, and then the next other one. thing, sure. the next other place I would say would be someplace like either Minnesota or even Winnipeg, 
what what are they looking like as far as because it just seems like the those Jets teams, have been a rumored team because if they get rid right. of line A, they go to one another score. Yeah, so that makes right. sense. Right. Yeah. So that's why. Yeah. So maybe you know one of those. Says, it's all going to boil down to who's going to have the money to afford that kind of second tier kind of money that he's going to be looking for. If he's not going to get the one year, then he's going to be looking for tenure. And if he's going to be looking for tenure, then he's going to be looking for at least six, six and a half to maybe seven. So I think if he wants tenure, he's going to have to take less. Actually, Yeah. I don't think he's going to be able to take. That's why I said at most, I would think six. If he gets tenure, like I said, uh, I think it'll be like six, five or four. AFM. But, okay, so you guys are on the lower end of what I said. Well, I did say six. I would say uh, I would say it would be more than four because I don't think uh, Hoffman's going to get paid less again. I love Tyler Toffoli, but he's not better than Mike Hoffman. So I don't think Mike Hoffman's going to get paid less than him where uh, I think he'll get paid at least. Like, Toffoli's like, they're kind of, he's not like, Hoffman's not a tier above Toffoli. It's just he's at, like, the top of the tier where Defoe's more in the middle of the same tier. So, like, that's why I feel Hoffman's going to get paid at least. Five and a half I can definitely go with, though. I feel like four, though, is a little low for me. I, I mean, that would be – I feel like if I'm Mike Hoffman, that's a little painful to stomach uh, after having Yeah, because that would be a pay cut from what he was getting this past year, you know what uh, I mean? If you're getting paid less than some of the guys that normally do not score nearly as much as you that already got signed. Um, right. So – uh, that would be interesting, but I mean, you guys pretty much hit all the teams on the head because um, Winnipeg was going to be a team I mentioned <clears throat> because of Line A. Now, a team that's bought some people out and moved some people around, if they continue to move people around and he wants a one-year deal, I wouldn't be 100% shocked if Nashville becomes a contender. Ooh, that's Nashville's a good, been a huge ooh, contender. That I was going to mention yeah, Nashville. Yeah, that's a great call. Um, oh, yeah. Because they really need – we saw that this year. They were a solid team still. They had 35 wins. They just couldn't get the key scoring when needed most. Yeah. And that's one of the things that Mike Hoffman's the best for. So, in sake of uh, keeping it going, I'm at the, as a host, I'm just going to – one team so we don't dwell on Mike Hoffman for half of the entire well no I was just gonna say uh, actually because if you if you go with him then maybe his teammate um Dananoff right could be what is gonna be the next domino that falls because he's right around in that kind of he's that he's next tier below he no he stopped he did oh he did okay he signed in Ottawa yeah okay yeah, that was a good deal for Ottawa, too, because I think bringing in a veteran for, I think it was $5 million a year. Um, for three years. Think, yeah. Um, so and you know I what? think uh, that good. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no. That Okay, but the 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 Grunland it, leaving Nashville, that's going to leave the hole in there, too, and that's almost the same kind of money for Hoffman and or – you know what I mean? So he that might definitely be... produces more than Michael Gronland, who's been struggling a little bit uh, yeah. at this point. Um, but since you mentioned him and he's also a free agent, why don't we just uh, go on to uh, good old Mikey here then and uh, talk about the 28. I think he's 28. The 28 year old Michael Gronland, uh, who still had 30 points this year. In 63 games, but uh, that's coming off of a year where he's actually been solid before that with at least 50 in uh, the last three previous years, which two 60-point seasons in 16 and 17, and then a 54-point season in 18. So 30 solid. Um, he's a guy that definitely will get picked up by somebody, has some speed to his game. Um, never became exactly, I believe he was the not yet ninth overall pick of his draft. He never exactly, uh, became truly, uh, that, but I think, uh, he's a guy that actually has a chance if he goes to the right situation to produce like in the 40 points percentile to like 55 points at least, uh, cause he's usually been good for that. So 
what teams do you guys think? I'll let uh, Steel start with this one. Think need a guy like that who's a, comp- a high competitor that typically gets you at least the middle tier points. Yeah, category. yeah, because he might. I think he might even be. He might even be a peg higher than Hoffman, and he might even demand more money than Hoffman too. He might demand it. He's not going to get it, though. You don't think so? Really? Okay. I mean, I, I'll if be Hoffman honest with you. I would Hoffman love to see him in orange and black. Hmm. I would love to see that. That would be my dream. But Yeah, I would take him for it. I feel like Gronlin's a guy you got to get a feel for because uh, he's been, like, a little seesaw where he's hell, he's been like okay in his career, but never amazing. So I don't think you want to give him more than a two year, maybe a one year deal. So if you do something like that, I'm fine with him coming to the Flyers. If he's a guy because he's at 28, though, yeah. that wants, say, a four year deal, I would not be okay with that because I'm not yeah. fully confident he's going to be fully consistent in that aspect. So uh, for a couple years, I would be okay with that. Um, I also think a team like Jersey, who just needs to mix in more guys that can stay with their fast skaters uh, that have skill there. They're guys that are either have long strides, so they move up the ice quickly right. or quicker skaters. Right. Uh, might be able to fit there, and they still have some space. Um, the way that Ottawa is adding some guys that you could get for one year that maybe be, be able to become trade bait, as well as Detroit, those teams are always options as well because they're adding trade bait potential one-year contracts on their teams as well, trying to accumulate more assets potentially in the future. Yeah. So yeah. those are all teams that come to mind. You uh, know, Calgary might be a team too, especially if 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 Johnny Goudreau does leave. I mean, you know, so those there are some things that haven't happened yet. You know what I mean? That I think are drastically going to change gonna... the landscape. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I mean. If he suddenly announces or comes out and says, you know, within the next couple of weeks that he's he's looking to be traded or he's not going to be with Calgary anymore, then that's going to either free up space for them. That's going to allow them to, to get somebody. And I think this Grunlin guy would be a pretty good shot up there with Calgary. That might not be a bad call for them if they have the space for it. You know what I mean? Um, he might not even be... Um, a bad fit either if um, depending on what happens up there in Boston too you know what I mean and if they have the cap space if they have it it all depends on what you know what I mean it all depends on how some of the dominoes fall yeah Boston definitely likes adding in guys that can get a decent amount of points like the 35 and up points guys at least to their bottom lines Exactly, and he's, so that he's 28 so. years old, and you know that would not be a bad fit for him there either. I don't think. I would also not be surprised if Pittsburgh goes after guys like that because they always go after guys that have skill that can never fully, except for like one year of their career or two, kind of fully get it in the zone where yeah. Grundlin fully fits into that category. So I feel like they're also a team that could go after him. But uh, Pirlo, who are your couple teams that you think could be a potential fit for uh, him as one of the uh, younger guys at 28 on the market as well that's had a couple above 50-point seasons in his career as one of the younger guys? Um, I think I think still brought up a good one with Boston there. They could be conversing with Mr. Smith, they already took a Nashville Predator and Craig Smith, and maybe Gronlin's like, hey, I wouldn't mind going going play with Craig. At least I know somebody. Then you know, in on the team, uh, they do have six million dollars in cap space, but they do have to sign Jake DeBrusque, and that's the issue there. They would have maybe have to move things around for that to happen. But it's definitely as far as him having a chance to play for a team that's going to win the cup. Uh, could possibly win the cup, that would be a team that he may like to go to. I have a feeling, though, that he's going to do something a lot the same as uh, Dadunov did and go with a uh, one-year deal with one of the bottom feeders. Maybe um, uh, you mentioned uh, Steele before this with Hoffman. I think it would be more like uh, L- the LA Kings could 
which yeah. give them a one, give them a one year. Uh, they definitely need some offensive help there. And if he uh, works out really well and they like him a lot, then they can extend him because he is, like you said, only 28 years old. Um, if he works out well, but they're, they they feel they have young players that can replace him, they can use it as a draft pick. Uh, yeah, come the, come, uh, And that gives him more value and may give him more money on the one-year deal. To be able to, if if he's willing to be that uh, open to being uh, being traded at the trade deadline, so if he's looking for money, and uh, who doesn't like the money, uh, that's something I think he would do. Detroit, L.A., Ottawa, but my thing, feeling is something like out L.A. If he wants to be competitive right now and go for a cup, I like your pick of Boston. I, I think that does make a lot of sense. Yeah, or here. I mean, we're a pretty good team too. So you know. Yeah, I just don't think awesome. Philadelphia. I think Philadelphia would have to move around too much, and I'm not. They sure. would have to move. They would have to move some stuff. Yeah. They'd yeah, like, and if but you know what though, we, we actually have like set ourselves someone. up that we potentially could. Yeah, that yeah. would be more if someone took Ghost now. Uh, right. You have Gustafson, who's basically a little bit of a more cleaner version of ghost when he's playing at his best if ghost is not fully back yet um so that makes ghost what many think more expendable so uh that would free up about four million four and a half i can't remember the exact number um so uh that would be a decent amount on top of the cap space we already have to be able to sign him at least for a one year if you want to give him a chance to bring him. Um, but he, he's playing on the right side. I mean, do you want a guy that small on your third, bottom six? Uh, he's not beating out Konechny, and he's not beating out no, no, no. He's yeah. not beating out Raffle even, I don't think, honestly. So I just don't think there's room for him myself, that's all. All right. Well, we can move on. Uh to our next guy, also a 28-year-old, uh, yeah, I read that correctly, 28-year-old free agent um, that's bounced around in his career. It's another quick skating hard worker. Um, he had 23 points in 63 games after having at least 30-point seasons in the three prior Um what do you guys think of Connor Sheary, who finished out last year in Pittsburgh, going back to Pittsburgh, and where he could go is another scrappy bottom line, smaller guy, but doesn't necessarily care that he's smaller. He'll still get in those dirty areas. That's how he had his 150-point season. He was able to play pretty scrappy that year and get in those uh, all the areas on the ice he had to, uh, and he played with some of the guys to set him up. So I'll throw one team out there to get it rolling, and I don't know if Pirlo will be happy about this or not. One, because he can keep up with all their guys is Edmonton. They have guys, if you remember, his best seasons were in Pittsburgh. Who did he have in Pittsburgh? He played with Malkin or Crosby. What tandem gets compared to Malkin and Crosby all the time is the new Malkin and Crosby. Oh, I don't know, Dreisaitl and McDavid. So, Connor Sheary might work out. It might, it's, it's just possible that since he had a 50-point season with Crosby and Malkin, he could definitely at least have something in the 40s, if not in the 50s also with Dreisaitl or McDavid. So that's why I feel like that could fit. You need guys that can keep up with those cats out there in Edmonton. So that would be the one team I would throw out. And uh, Pirlo, since I brought up your club, uh, I'll let you start on this one and uh, <laughs> see where you think Connor Sheary could go. Um, I think he's just, I honestly think he's getting no more than a league minimum. And he could go to a lot of different teams. I could see him going to the Columbus Blue Jackets. That's another uh, one I was thinking of. Thank you. Thank you for stealing my team. Okay. Uh, no, but that's good, though. That's great, because that just, just goes to show you the great minds think alike. The Islanders are also I think one. Another one that because he's cheap and he can throw up some points and they could really use some points – uh, also, you got to remember how small he is. Eh? Like, mm-hmm. no, it's yeah, it's exactly. got to blend in a little bit, but uh, maybe the San Jose Sharks might throw him a little bit 
uh, possibly for their yeah I, I could see that um, and then yeah um, that those are the two teams that pop out of me so I'll, I'll just we've been going long on a lot of these as far as the Edmonton one I just, I don't think he's going to fit in there uh, we we already have a small right winger and uh, Yamamoto and Jesse Puglia Harvey which is going to be given ice time. Uh, so I don't really want to be playing a guy like that in my bottom six. So man. that's interesting. What I did forget about Puglia Harvey. Yeah, uh, and, so. and you know, the, I'll be real honest with you too. I think there might be guys out there. Oh, it, it's 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 honest. It, it's something that just goes to show he needs to play with really good players in order to be productive it seems like the most productive yeah he puts okay up so like, if you don't like if you don't like have those third tier seasons right out those type of players right. like 25 to 30 point seasons yeah so if you don't have those those two two guys on that line then it doesn't really you know what i mean i would i think i would much rather go with somebody who's a little bit younger and a little cheaper you know what I mean with with Dominic uh, Cahoon going. I think so, they're both going to do the same. I think Cahoon and, and Cherry are probably going to make about the same amount of money on. That's what I mean. That's why I thought. That's why I brought him up because I think they're they're three years in difference. It, but it depends if you go with more provenness or a guy that has potential to shape him a little bit more because he's still in his prime. Like yeah. middle age twenties, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can try to yeah. get him fully going. Yeah. And so you know, uh, Carolina both might, of is coming guys, to mind. Yeah. Carolina is another uh, the other C team. I had one. I had the other C team. In mind. <laughs> yeah. that's, uh, one of, that's uh, in your family's fanhood uh, a little bit, which is the Blackhawks because oh, they said yeah, they're rebuilding. Be a good call there too, yeah. And since they're rebuilding a guy that's not going to cost you much, and either Cahoon, since we brought him up now too, or Sheary could either fit there because they in can. Chicago. They can, yeah, they can with the players that can set them up there, produce points with those right players and not cost a lot of money for a team that's trying to rebuild or retool their team, whatever you want to say there. So. Yeah, no, I like that. I like that Chicago call, especially, you know what, they even have the space to get both of them. They do, yeah, Chicago. They, uh, why not? I mean, why not? They could be They could be a great, I mean, you know, you could get that young player and Dominic, and then you could also get that proven player and Connor. And be they able already to- had Cahoon, so. Chicago already had Cahoon at one time. They did, yeah, but that yeah. doesn't, so that they doesn't could bring stop back. the team. They yeah, could bring yeah, I mean, stop. Mm-hmm. Better, it's better than brought back Sheary. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's what I mean. So you know, mm. um, and we'll see. That was two years ago. You know what I mean? And we'll see. It's somebody that they know. It's somebody that's been in their system. You know what I mean? And 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 if you bring in like Sheary with with Dominic, and then you you pair them up with the rest of the team that Chicago has, that might not be a bad call right there either. No, 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 because like I said, there are guys that have put up points at times in their career, and Chicago's not, it doesn't seem like they're trying to spend a lot of money right now. They're just trying to find guys that fit in well for them. So uh, all those guys would make uh, tons of uh, sense. But uh, let's wrap it up. We're going to do a couple of these videos too, by the way, for you in the off season as people continue to get signed of our remaining free agents, maybe even once a week on the Sports Fanatic News and True Philadelphia Sportscast channels. True Philadelphia Sportscast is where we're at audio-wise, and Sports Fanatic News is my YouTube channel where we're at video-wise. Um, but we are close this out with a couple more uh, forwards. Um, the next guy I'll go to because I know – He's a guy that could potentially fit in well to someone's bottom six that has a lot of cups that's also going to be really cheap. I feel like this guy's going to go to a contending team potentially to just be a good bottom six player with cups. Trevor Lewis. Um, wow. He's going to be a guy that uh, has always been a work hard, play hard type player, like a Pitlick esque player. That has seasons he puts up points because he's always going to try to outwork everyone because he knows his skill is not going to out ridiculous everyone because he was actually a first round pick. He just never 
turned into that fullness of a first round pick, but he turned himself into a heck of a career, just solid uh, player that could battle, be good on the penalty kill, uh, has had in the 20 point seasons before, and has always had pretty solid PK seasons on the penalty kill for team. So I think contenders, uh, Boston, a team you brought up earlier for fitting into their penalty kill and stuff like that. They always like having one of the better ones if they can would be a team that came to mind another because their PK looks, they have so many young guys on it could be Montreal. Those would be two teams I thought of that could potentially use. So they have less younger guys on their PK and someone that's more experienced to mentor those young guys as well, as well as playing in their bottom six. So those would be my two teams. I'll let uh steel start with this one. What do you think someone like him that has some cups under his belt could too? Wow, you know, I'm 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 going to go out west and I'm going to say maybe even could Edmonton. What do you think, Parlo? Do you think Edmonton would be looking at something like that? That would be one of the teams that would come to mind, either that or Calgary or Keep or bottom. Yeah, yeah, you know, one of those one of those guys um maybe here's another one too and and you say going to a contender what is Dallas looking like? What do they got kind of as, as far as money wise? What, how many guys? Trevor they... Lewis ain't going to cost you that much though, because he made two million last year, and since he's going like he's kind of uh, just been a work hard player more, I think would be like a one five type guy. So whoever can afford about one point five at most. Right. So if Dallas like could afford player. him, that would be a. I think that would be a nice little. That will be a nice little um, upgrade on their side, too. You know what I mean? Of course, I look, all these guys we talk about, I would love to see for the Flyers. You, you know what I mean? But we, most we don't. Most of them, yeah. I don't yeah, know about most all of the guys them. Yeah, yeah, for the most part. By, you know? Yeah. yeah. But, but uh, we're. Go ahead. What were you saying? No, that's what I was just going to say. I was just going to say either Edmonton or, or you know, some somebody like that. Or maybe even Dallas, depending on what Dallas is looking to do, they might be. Because if you're saying he's he's looking for a contender, I think Dallas is going to be right there, you know. Or maybe even Colorado, you know. You you have to look at those teams that were in it this past year. I believe that those teams are going to be in it for the next year. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I agree with that. Those teams are going to be in it, and they'll probably look for guys with, excuse me, that winning experience of winning cups. But uh. Pirlo, we're going to you to who you think he might go to, and then we'll close out with the guy you wanted to bring up for the forwards, and then we'll move on to a couple goalies and defensemen and close out uh, this week's edition. And then next week, I'm going to start with defense since we really covered forwards a lot this week. But uh, um, what do you think of Trevor Lewis? He's, what, 35 now? 33. 33? Hey, don't be making the man two years old. Yeah, we're – and did he? If I am I right, did he finish? Did he was he playing in St. Louis at the end of last year? I can't remember now. No, I think he finished with the Kings. Still, I don't think Kings. he left. Okay, so he still is with the Kings. Um, he's thirty three. I think it's going to be a team. The the te- uh, it could be several of the teams you're talking about. There's a lot of teams, so I'm just going to bring up a team that probably nobody was thinking about, not because they were able to win a cup right away, but because I think his services would be deeply needed and uh, maybe you could get a couple few bucks out of it and uh, maybe even a little bit of term and that would be the florida panthers uh the florida yeah, panthers there you go so desperately need character in that room and that's why they've made a lot of moves like getting patrick hornquist in there and uh um, radko gudas and guys like that um the uh, zito came into that uh, came into that team and, and talked to the owner and, and basically came into his mind, this team needs character. This team needs some good veteran character. And Lewis is all that. couple cups, go in there, hardworking guy, keeps himself in peak shape, uh, plays the game the way, it's, way, the way it's supposed to be played. And I think he could go in there and kind of just – to get these kids moving in the right direction. So that would be a team I would think that possible that he would choose. Um, if he's just simply looking for cups, you guys brought up some pretty good ones there for sure too. I, I like you mentioned the Edmonton Oilers. I'd love to get some cups in that room. Sure. We need cups in that room. We don't have any cups in that room. 
So yeah. Well, the last guy uh, we'll bring up uh, at forward for this video will be somebody that uh, Pirlo wanted to bring up, uh, which I, I've always uh, liked him as a player, too, when he doesn't think he's worth $2 million more than he is, per se. Uh, but that's all right. Uh, it happens to the best of us. Um, Anthony Duclair, um, he's a good player that can produce in the right situation. Again, if he wasn't asking for as much money at the age of 25, he would fit in well Edmonton playing alongside guys like McDavid with the speed he has or Dreisaitl or um, Nugent Hopkins as well, who also is not a slow mover because he had 40 points on uh, Ottawa in 66 games. I realize he fell off a little bit, but the year before that he had 33 points after having 23 points. So he keeps going up these last three years. So he's a guy – that's ascending, so I feel like I'll let Pirlo start with this one. He actually is worth at least a couple million bucks because of his ascending stats, but probably not in like the fives to six range that it was yeah, rumored he could be asking for, but maybe in the three to three and a half range that you see people tend to get paid around before they get paid that five to six million deal. Wouldn't you agree with that? I, yeah, I mean, he, he's got to get his head out of his butt. Uh, when he was in Columbus, <laughs> he didn't uh, play that. You know, he's only had one or two real decent years. And now there's a, uh, you know, the cap is flat. And people are not, teams are not in it to take risks right now. So um, he really did like all the wrong moves here. <laughs> Dropped his age went in and did the deal by himself and then uh, and the Ottawa Senators went like, yeah, no. So he looks really bad right now. So he's not doing himself any favor. So I don't know what he... Apparently he's belie- he, he's kind of a conspiracy belief. To, like he thinks every, everybody is out to get him or something like that kind of guy and a little bit funny. So I think he will get signed. Hopefully he'll, put, he'll realize at the end of it all, unless he just wants to sit and wait and 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 snivel <laughs> eventually a team will give him some money but i'd be looking at a team like exact opposite of what we're talking about with lewis going to a team that needs to find character i think a team now here would be a team that's already high character and think that they can absorb some of his possible antics and be able to uh, fit him under the cap so that would lead me to somebody like the St. Louis Blues or mm. uh, who may have to peel off a couple of veterans to get under the cap and could, you know, still would like to get some offense. Uh, that would be the Pittsburgh Penguins. You've mentioned him a lot. That seems like a team that seems to think that they have a lot of character. Um, I like to say that because I would really dispute the character level of Pittsburgh Penguins now compared to maybe a few years ago. But um, they seem to think that they have the character to be able to bring guys along. That's why they went and got Phil Kessel. His, his, his character was yeah. questionable. So I think Pittsburgh Penguins might try to work them under and give him t- two and a half or three or something like that. Uh, somebody like that would be um, a team that I would think that he could possibly go to. But He's really got to start thinking down the road. He's really got to start opening up his eyes and realizing nobody's giving him the money that he thinks he's getting. Yeah, because that's how it always is. You never get what you think you're worth. You get what everybody else thinks you're worth. The market is, says you you're know, worth. and and you know, I I like your pick there with that, but I was gonna say like the Caps. Yeah, like with Laviolette being there and the new coach. That might not be a bad call for Anthony Duclair to go there. You know what I mean? That might be a good fit for him there. Because yeah, it's just they they need, need, they need have character. Type. They have character, but they need character depth. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, I they're just real. I agree with you, but they, uh, they're so t- I don't know how they possibly get the cap room to bring them on. But oh, okay. I agree with you. That's a team that could probably absorb his kind of that kind of person for sure. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's what, if that's what you're talking about is something like a high character team like that. Um, I definitely think Washington. I like your pick with with uh, Pittsburgh as well. Um, maybe it could be a team. Yeah. 
chance, guys, that L.A. could be a team again because they got cap yeah. space. And they're a team that seems like they're willing to take chances on what guys that Buffalo? could yeah, potentially become part that's of the fold. Yeah. Buffalo also is a good pool because, again, a team that's trying to find sneaky guys that can become part of their fold without having to spend top tier or even second top tier money for them because they find them before they really fit into yeah. their team. Yeah. So, how yeah, many arms know. How many arms does Stahl have, though? He's going <laughs> to have his yeah. arms full just shaking Skinner around, let he's alone bring him something up. He's, he's got I, eight, I think a malcontent, yeah, yeah. maybe Buffalo maybe don't want to go, doesn't want to go the malcontent. But I do like the L.A. guy, the L.A. idea. That yeah, I do too. There's a I lot of like that too. Uh, uh, also, the coach who I always forget his name, McClellan, I think would be good for a guy like that. No nonsense, but fair. And uh, they've got a, like Dowdy. What would Dowdy do with the Dow? That's a, I, I really like that. That was a really good one, Joe, too. Yeah, that's that's good. Yeah. Now, for this one, I'm just going to list three goalies that actually still have statistics that they're actually definitely are going to get picked up as long as they don't retire because all three of them are not spring chickens uh, in terms of hockey age. Uh, they'll get signed by somebody to be at least a third goalie, if not a second goalie, because most of them have done good when they've had a good defense in front of them, uh, even at their um, later ages. Uh, Ryan Miller is a guy I believe is going to stay out West if he decides to not retire. He's contemplating. Uh, he's going to either stay with the Ducks, I would think, or maybe – if the if a team like the Sharks who don't even need like want him as their third goalie and he's fine with just getting paid for not doing much, or same with the Kings, just want good depth and he's fine. I don't think he's going to move very far. That's why I feel he's at when he's already contemplating retiring. Why would you move far to play? So I feel that's probably the best thing. Where Craig Anderson. I feel is likely to probably stay with one of Canada's teams so he doesn't have to completely readjust. But uh, who knows where um, maybe if he doesn't do that, uh, a team that definitely could use a veteran if he's going to be a guy that could try to beat people out. Um, He could also try to go to a team again like the – Ducks or something like that because they got some young goalies coming up and or you could try to go to because they got Stellars there where that will may help Stellars to be able to compete a little bit something like that uh where um Jimmy Howard's a guy who before last year did not stink he just had lessening stats but that's also because Detroit and still Steve Yeiserman showed up, forgot what they were doing uh, for a pretty decent amount of time before he showed up. So, so, uh, but it's all right. He's there now, so now they'll be okay. But that's not important. The important thing is Jimmy Howard's defense was abysmal. They were Swiss cheese last year. So uh, like most of us could have skated past half of those people because half the time they weren't paying attention to the play. It's like, oh, wait a minute. Uh, so... Uh, like, I don't know what system they were running there, but it didn't work. Uh, but anyway, Howard with the right defense would be a guy. That's why if someone, if like someone like Hudobin left Dallas, he, Dallas was kind of going to be my pick for someone like him because like, if you have a stacked defense, I think he fits in a team like St. Louis could fit though. Cause I think right now, Billy Huso is uh, slotted to be their backup. Who's a youngster. Uh, so if they want to have a guy to kind of push you, so just like the Ducks would be pushing if they sign Anderson and Stolars, that could also work as well because signing veterans that actually have stats in their careers pushes young guys more to be able to win that backup job as well. So it's kind of a win-win situation if you get them for – you. well, you know you're going to get them for good money and they actually pan out great. And then if they do pan out still but your backup youngster plays better – then you have two guys where you can have three pretty good goalies, which is probably going to be huge for next year, honestly, because in a condensed season, God forbid, but there's likely to be more tweaked injuries with goaltenders. So having three deep rather than being two deep 
is probably going to be the first time that's actually potentially been very pivotal next year. Right. Well, didn't didn't Hudobin didn't he resign with Dallas? That's why I said if he didn't resign with Dallas, I would oh, think oh. Howard okay. would be. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know, man. You know, look, New Jersey they bought out um, Corey Schneider. Corey Schneider. So they might they're looking for somebody. Yeah, he's you already know. signed to Corey Schneider, which is kind yeah, of yeah. That's he's that's got right. signed before everybody else. But good for yeah. him. I hope he's able to bounce back. So that would be the team that I would be looking for as far as somebody like that to go to to them, you know, because now they have a rather large hole there that they need to fill. So that's what I'd be looking for as far as New Jersey would be somebody that, you know, I mean, if they're buying out $6 million for Corey, they're obviously, they they obviously need some goalie now, you know what I mean? So they're going to either they're, they got to have somebody, they got to pick somebody up, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, yeah, that could definitely work. And then, uh, Pirlo, do you have anything to say about those uh, goalies I brought up? If not, we can uh, move on to a couple defensemen. As this is our first episode on this went long, but that's okay because in podcast form we get people to listen to longer stuff too. So video form, not always, but podcast. So uh, who do you do you think anything about those goalies or uh, what are your thoughts well, on think- that? It was Howard. Howard, I think, is just going to get a tryout contract somewhere. Uh, somewhere, yeah. Probably what he's going to get. Um, yeah, maybe a two-way. I did like, like what you said for, uh, uh, what did you say, St. Louis. St. Louis seemed like a pretty good spot. Yeah. Uh, because they got, yeah, Huso and uh, Bennington, and yeah, definitely a veteran to be able to keep things around there if he jumps up and down between the AHL. Give him uh, one year, 700000 to play in the minors, and if if necessary, that would probably be not a bad spot. What other goaltenders were they again? I'm sorry, I might have missed it. The other guys I mentioned were uh, Craig Anderson and Ryan Miller. Craig Anderson and Ryan Miller. Ryan Miller is Anaheim or nothing, I think. Uh, he may retire, and if he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Craig Anderson, uh, uh, that's a very good question question um there there's lots of places he could go that possibly but again more sounds kind of like a tryout type thing as well yeah i don't think he's i don't think any one of these i don't think these are these are the top goalies that are you know that are going to be signing with any of the any you know what i mean these guys are just going to be depth players anyway you know what i mean so i think yeah. especially if if uh, miller doesn't come back with Anaheim, you know what I mean? Then I think he's going to retire. Um, yeah. and, and Jimmy Howard, if he doesn't get a, a tryout contract somewhere, he's either going to be playing in the minors or he's going to be sitting. And and you know what I mean? So that's just kind of how I feel too. So yeah. Anderson, he's the only one that has any kind of value as far as still being able to, to be able to play relatively well, I think, and be able to play at a high enough level to where he potentially could be a backup goalie. Yeah, you, you know, like I don't yeah. see him being your number one yeah, guy I'm playing also, forty games. Mm-hmm. No, but I'm also a little bit uh, then, uh, which I know Pirlo knows this because last year again his defense was pitiful with bad defenses before he still did good up until the age of thirty six. I still think if you could keep your uh, goals against and save percentage in a pretty good spot with Detroit up until one season where you were just really bad. Yeah. I'll give you a chance to bounce back and be somebody's backup. I still think Jimmy Howard has a chance to be somebody's backup. if he, Because, again, it, it's not just competitive edge for the youngster when you bring in a veteran. It's competitive edge for the veteran as well to beat out that youngster and not let him have a job yet. So – it's, it, it goes both ways when you do that type of signing. That's why I call that a win-win yep. uh, situation. But for the sake of this video going long, I'm just going to bring up two defensemen for this one. And like I said, we'll start on defensemen in the next one to really hit them on the head. But we'll start this one with two right-handers. And I'll start it off with uh, the 30-year-old Travis Hamannick who finished playing with Calgary. And I'll go to Pirlo first. What are some teams you think Travis Hamannick could go to? I'm surprised he didn't go to Winnipeg. 
But I'm not surprised he didn't go to Winnipeg. I know he wants to go to Winnipeg. <laughs> um, I, I've always thought Hamnick was a little bit overrated. And uh, it seems like the league is catching up to that idea too. But there's enough play teams out there that still need, should need a 5-6. I think the biggest problem with Hamnick is he's basically come out and said he does not want to play out east. So it's going to be a Western team. And the team that needs defense the most doesn't appear to want him. And it's from yeah. he's from there. He's from there, Winnipeg. He's from Winnipeg. He's from Manitoba. And they don't seem to want him. So uh where 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 are we gonna go there, Mr. Hamnick? Uh everybody's pretty much filled up their D in the West that I can tell. Um Nashville, no. L.A. possibly, if he wants to go there. Uh, L.A. could may, maybe want to give him a bit, but I think he's limiting himself quite a bit and is going to end up getting like a million dollars, maybe even a league minimum contract to go to a team to work his way up in a lineup. San Jose Sharks possibly, but all of the, the they don't have all that much cap space. I could see San Jose, but... Um, I'm really maybe, surprised maybe that he didn't go to Winnipeg. I was going to say yeah. Winnipeg. Yeah. Winnipeg, Winnipeg definitely would, think he would need him, but if, if he was going to go there, he'd probably already be there. Yeah. Well, they because they signed uh, uh, Dylan DeMello, that they, they might, you know what I mean? They might have to work a different kind of a deal there, or they might have to be doing, you know what I mean? Depending on what the, the Dylan deal was, you know what I'm saying? So. Um, well, well I, that's that might be a place where he might go as as Winnipeg, as far as that's concerned. Um, gosh, man, you know, <sighs> he doesn't want to play out east, so and and the West is pretty much. I mean, where's he going to go? Well, I don't. I can't. I said Vancouver would be another option. On yeah, Vancouver or Winnipeg, or you know, yeah. I can't think of anywhere else that he could go that. Vancouver's tight to the cap. They've got, yeah. and Arizona's tight to the cap. Hey, hey, hey. You, you Arizona, know, San Jose. Next year, you can go play Maybe in Arizona. Anaheim, yeah. if Anaheim wants another righty for one year that they know is actually more steady because their defensemen have been wavy, like in terms of like striding up and then more plateauing, and then so. Uh, if they can get more veterans in there, I'm not sure if they would be opposed to that. But that would be the only other team I could think of uh, he's, in he's the only West. getting a million a year as it stands right now at most, at most, at most. I would say. What about Dallas? Do you think Dallas? He could go to Dallas. Dallas doesn't need him at all. Really. That's, I don't think uh, that's what I mean. Need him, but for one year, I mean, people go anywhere. The like teams that sure. get one If you want contract. to sign for league minimum, come on, yeah, sure. We'll have yeah, um, you know, uh, you we'll know, have you yeah. sit up in the stands. I don't know though, Fat. I don't know if it's going to go to Vancouver. You know what I mean? I was reading a, uh, an article the other here not long ago that said something about the talks breaking off uh, with him going to Vancouver. So I don't know. Um, it's uh, that's one of those things where I think other dominoes are going to have to fall in order before, because you're going to see you're going to see some of these guys are not going to get signed when until the season starts, and then some guys are going to get hurt, and then you're going to see some of these guys get brought in. A few, yeah. yeah, yeah, that might happen to a few guys, yeah, but um. As we wrap up this video, as this one was more of like almost an uh, hour long rather than a half hour long uh, well, you know. podcast, we, uh, yeah. we'll go with the other righty on the market that had a pretty solid when he went to Carolina, uh, did fairly uh, well for them uh, in uh, Sammy Vodnin, who looked uh, pretty good in the uh, postseason um, after playing for the Ducks, Devils, and then uh, Hurricanes in his career. Uh, he's coming off of a mid uh, 4.5, mid 4 millions level contract. Um, what are teams, uh, I'll start with Steele on this one, that you think a guy like him could go to to close us out here? Well, I'm going to go with a team that you you maybe um, might have been thinking about uh, where Vancouver might be. 
might be thinking about this 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 guy here. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, I think he played really well in in the postseason, especially with Carolina. I think he showed well. Um, uh, he's got a good game. I don't. Is he going to be able to get his for whatever million dollars? Man, I don't. I don't know. But you know, is 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 Buffalo going to be a team that could look at him? Is is you know. Where is New York? Uh, you know, where are the Rangers? What what are they looking at? You know what I mean? These are some of the teams that I could think of that potentially could be looking at somebody like this. Yeah, and then depending where Carolina is at, uh, if he only ends up being able to get another one year, like a one year contract, because the market's not what he thought it could be, that would be the situation where I wouldn't be surprised if he could. Back to Carolina, you seem to like there, it yeah. there yeah, and yeah. fit in well. Uh, that would be more though if he can't find a ten-year deal and needs to stay for one year because Carolina has more things to worry about down the line. So I don't think they're going to give him any tenure. But yeah. uh, Pirlo, what do you think about Vodnin? I love Vodnin, and uh, it's unfortunate that for him that he's a free agent now in this environment. Um. If there's one guy, if there's if the, out of all the people we're talking about, I think this is the guy that teams are going to make room for. There's going to be teams that are going to move players in order to get Ottenen on their team. Um, but, but which one? Seriously, like it's very it's very difficult. We'll, to we'll really... give you Ghost. We'll we'll take we'll take uh, and we'll give you Ghost. We'll we'll take that. That's almost money yeah, from us right there. Yeah. I mean, I'm thinking, okay, just go, he's close. My gut says that the New York Islanders find a home for Johnny Boychek and put a six second round pick on him to give him up to somebody and sign Votnin because they need defense really bad there. And Johnny Boychek is just too injured. Uh, that's my gut feeling on where he would end up. He's used to that area. That's a wild card pick, too. That's a that's a, a wild card uh, gut feeling. Um, the alien lean on that one. Yeah, Pizzazz, uh, Pizzazz uh, pick there. Yeah. yeah, that's that's the yeah that's that's my that's where I think I just yeah just, yeah the alien lean on that one. He yeah. really enjoyed New Jersey. <laughs> He really liked the New Jersey area and all of that, and the Islanders desperately need. And not only that, they're thinking about bringing Green back, and uh, there's a lot of new. Right. There's a lot of players there that he's used to. He knows. Uh, it just seems like uh, that that would be the the team that would uh, definitely move some bodies to get a guy like that. And it's just Lamorello's type of player. And I like. I love Vatman. I think he's so underrated. Doesn't get enough credit for how good of a player he is. Yeah. Now, again, if he's taking shorter tenure, one, two year deal because of the market, a team that could bring him in for some of the younger uh, defensemen that haven't really fully stabilized their careers yet uh, could be uh, a team like Chicago to try to retool their team so they have in like a new wave energy type of defenseman that you know is always consistent back there that's part of a new mold and not part of the old mold that would just be another team that i thought of since they let slater koku who's right-handed uh go who was kind of improving a little bit in his career uh Vodnin's a very good right-handed defenseman you could definitely add him do you think yeah, you could go i just have a florida a Florida. Florida could work too. Yeah. I just have a feeling after spending half of his career on poor Anaheim teams and then going to New Jersey through a massive re- rebuild, I don't think he's got that taste in his mouth to go to another team that's using the word rebuild. My thinking is he's looking for a place that he has a chance to win. So that's why I like No, that. you're right. You're right. It's just when you go to those teams, they're probably going to give you more money. Like, if you go to team, yeah, usually you get, like, a half million, a million more or so uh, yeah. from teams that are more retooling because they want to bring you in to help their culture, too, and not just their uh, 
right. not just their on ice play because they know they're not fully there yet on the ice. But anyway, guys, this has been a, a great video. We're almost fully uh, at the hour mark. Uh, you can check out all of our information for Pirlo, Steel, and myself on steelflyers.com. And you can also check out Pirlo and I's uh, betting page or Patreon at bpalpicks slash patreon.com if you want to check that out. And you can follow Pirlo at Pirlo's NHL Pal. I got that right, right? Pirlo's NHL Pal, yeah. Yep. And then you're at Steel Flyers 52 yep. on Twitter. And you can find all the rest of his information on steelflyers.com, where you can find all the rest of mine, other than the fact that I write for Pub Sports and OT Heroics as well. I am Joe Borick, where you can follow me at JJ Borick 26 with Steve Duncan, AKA Pirlo Wisdom and Steel Flyers. This has been our NHL first edition of our NHL's free agency off-season episode. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everyone. And again, please like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you think of the off-season so far. Peace out, everybody.